Hello and welcome to our presentation of in-context learning for latency estimation. This is John Work with Martin Rapp and Thomas Elsten. Um, let's get started right away with an example of hardware where neural architecture search. Um, to illustrate this, I'll use evolutionary architecture, architecture search. So we initially start with the population of architectures from which we then select a few high-performing ones. Um, to then cross over or mutate, and then we'd like to collect a hardware metric next to a dataset metric. So for the hardware metric, we take our mutated architectures and run them through a third-party tool chain, and then deploy them on device, and then retrieve the hardware metric, let's say latency. Uh, after doing that, we can return these measured uh, hardware metrics back to the search process and then continue. The problem is that everything here on the right side is quite time intensive and hard to parallelize um, the latter because we might only have a few hardware devices or have to compete with other teams for hardware time. So what we'd like ideally to do is to replace this right hand side with a model that gives us uh, a prediction for hardware metrics instead of having to do this manual process of running this through, um, through actual devices. Um, so as we've just motivated, Measuring hardware latency is expensive, and one latency measurement can take up to multiple minutes depending on the target platform. So doing this possibly thousands of times throughout an architecture search is not feasible. Uh, another problem is that current latency predictors are not very sample efficient. So for example, HELP, which is the current state of the art, takes more than 8,000 samples across a set of nine hardware devices to train an accurate predictor for one search space. So this is not really feasible to do if you switch search spaces um, or generally to collect these latency samples. Um, so the problem setting that we'd like to tackle and our goal is that we'd like to predict latencies of unseen architectures on equally unseen hardware devices and do so with only a few on-device latency measurements of a set of reference architectures. And our contributions here are twofold. So first of all, we're the first to formulate latency estimation as an in-context learning problem where we pass a set of support samples to our model um, to then predict for our query architecture. And the next Contribution is that we um, build a latency estimator that is 70% or more sample efficient than the current state of the art. So during training, we have access to an architecture latency data set. So these are architectures and the latencies across a set of hardware devices. And we use these um, in our prior to generate synthetic architecture latencies to which, with which we then train our model, which is a prior Bayesian fitted network, a PFN. And then uh, after we've trained and um, we want to perform inference, we might have an unseen hardware device. Uh, and from this unseen hardware device, we um, collect a, sam a set of support samples. So these will be then architectures and the respective latencies on that device. And we pass the, these together with a set of query architectures. So architectures for which we'd like to predict the latency to our model. And our model then performs in context learning on the set, uh, on the set of support samples to get a good prediction um, for these query architectures. So that is our a quick overview of um, training and inference in our case. So now let's look at an example uh, of our results. So here we are looking at sample efficiency and what we've done here is we've plotted um, students' rank correlation coefficient um, against uh, of predicted and um, real archaic or ground truth latencies uh, against the number of training latency samples that we've used during training. Um, and as you can see here, we're comparing ourselves with help again. And um, the key takeaway from this uh, graph here is that we can achieve the same performance in terms of student strength correlation coefficient as help um, at only um, for like at, at a quarter of uh, the training samples that they have used in their paper, um, or actually more than four times fewer samples. Um, and this is on the NAS Bench 2 one search space. We've also uh, looked at the uh, FPNet search space, and here we're actually beating them in terms of students' rank correlation coefficient for all considered settings of training samples seen during training. Um, and finally, we also looked at um, we also looked at um, rank correlation again, but um, now reducing not only the number of training samples but also the number of training samples per device, or uh, let's say the number of devices in the training set. So our uh, reasoning here was that adding a new device is much more expensive than just measuring more latencies on a device that you already possess. And we're still able to beat them with a third fewer devices and um, quite a few number of uh, training samples. So of course, these are not all results. So please um, come to our poster during the poster session and thank you for listening.